Hey guys, so I have Darwin here again, and what we have decided to do is plug the beauty here out into the cabin bench, and that way we can do some little test runs, make sure we don't have any burn through, and we wanted to show you how easy it is to take it apart. The kids already took the old one apart. Now Julie wants to be able to run it through the bench. We already have a bench built. It's already there. It's already installed. It's in her cabin. This way, we're really comparing apples to apples because the original uh, stove that I built her was in her cabin. And so, and she lived with it. And she used it and lived in the cabin. And so she understands how it behaved and why it was so awesome. And she wants to do an apples for apples comparison with this stove running through the same bench. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. I'm excited. Before Darwin takes this apart, you guys saw us try it with a, a shroud, and the shroud is meant to be a, a small mass. It's like a bench, but it's very small. Right. But we found that we didn't like the sand. The sand was easier because it would just pour out the bottom of the shroud, but it also didn't work as well as, as a heat um, regulator. Right. And, and the reason is, is because of the density. If you think about it like ice. Um, if you have a big old chunk of ice, it takes a long time for the energy to dissipate out of that ice and melt it. If you take that same block of ice and you bust it up into a million little ice pieces, uh, they melt away and, and the energy can dissipate out of those pieces because of the surface area, like, immediately. Right. You might want to use something a little more dense. Even though we used like half inch pebbles, and but they're rocks and they're super hard and they're super dense. And once they got hot, they stayed hot for a long dang time. Where the sand, it got hot um, and it got hot pretty quickly, but it almost acted like an insulation on itself. So when the outer edge of the sand dissipated its energy and its heat, the inner portion of the sand um, lost it at about this exact same rate. See, you could put a, a sheet metal screw in there just as easy as a pop rivet. Um, it's just, that's what I happen to have. And I think I have some sheet metal screws, so when we put it back together, we'll just... Is it going to... Well, I need the flat pan head screw. I don't know if I have any of them. But... And is it going to affect the way that the smoke uh, travels through the stove? You're not going to have leakage? Oh, no. I don't remember. Did we seal this part, or did we just seal that part? Well, we just sealed this part. Yeah. We never even sealed this, so this uh -uh. is not a sealed thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, my stove, and that's the incredible thing about this stove. It ends up being a negative pressure system, and that's where the double wall stove pipe and the um, augmented chimney, where I augmented your chimney and insulated it, comes into play. So we have this chimney that's insulated with perlite and then has a concrete cap at the bottom. Right. But we've also done aircrete, aircrete actual insulated stove yeah. pipes. Yeah, and this is an example of a piece of that right here. But this is where I augmented your chimney and we put a liner in it, which was a really inexpensive liner because the sections, it took about seven of them and they're only about $6 a piece. So that's 42 bucks. And then about a $6 bag of perlite that I poured down around it. And it went in fast. Yeah, it went in super fast. I did it in about an hour, and I did it in the dead of night. <laughs> it was dark, right? And dark and cold. <laughs> Just know but because of the configuration of where this is going in her cabin, that instead of exhausting out the back of the stove, now we're going to exhaust out of the side. You could exhaust it out the front, out this side, out that side, out the back, any way you want, just by rotating the downdraft shroud. It's a tight fit. Yeah, I remember that was hard so, to get in the first time. That's about as hard as that is coming apart. I don't know if we'll use this out in the cabin because we're going to come out the side right into the valve and just plug it in in the cabin. But um, 
Did we get a little bit of something in there? Well, it looks more like it's kind of brownish. Yeah. Here, there, there's there some, go. More like, some oh, daylight. Just a teeny bit of just, oh, it's Yeah, just you see that? Yeah, it's ash. It's not even um, soot. Yeah. You know, like what you would. Do you want me to come and help? Oh, you got it. Okay. It always makes okay. me nervous lifting Now, the this area. is the part that's incredible. I want you to get a shot of the inside of the riser. Because see how clean it is. Yeah. It's not black like in a normal stove. Yeah. Right? It's, and, and guys, get this. I'm taking the riser apart and taking it off of the thing. It's so heavy. <laughs> this, that's, that's as hard as it is. Yeah. It just sits there. That is the one part that when the kids did that out at the cabin, I did that part. Not because it was heavy, but because I wanted to be very cautious that it wasn't getting bumped and, because Air Creek can be brittle. <coughs> this one is protected on the outside. Look, a piece of, a piece of your uh, cloth that you use as fire starter. Yeah. Imagine how bad it would be if it was paper. Yeah. All right, so. So here's the air intake for the secondary burn chamber, right there. And you've all seen the video where it sucks it in from the front, yeah. preheats it on top. Well, we saved the sand, so if we need to put more down to anchor it again. Yeah. <coughs> we have it. I just wanted the sand as a seal. Yeah. And it worked just fine. And this is a traditional chimney. This is. As far as like we took my big fat ugly eight inch chimney yeah. and turned it into a five inch chimney right. or is it a six inch chimney now? It's a five inch. So it's a five inch chimney now. And this was an eight inch. And so that kind of chimney will benefit even a traditional stove. Oh, <coughs> huge. So it'll just plug right in. Um, before we start, I want to explain to people what this drip <laughs> is so that they're not alarmed by it. Right. So our, our uh, Airbnb renter came in and with express instructions to only use fabric and kindling in the stove. And she started burning cardboard and paper and maybe even some plastic and it in rushed there. up the riser it clogged everything up yeah so it wasn't running the right speed it was running too slow yeah and that's not how rocket stoves are gonna gonna work yeah. a dry wood has at least 15 to 20 percent moisture in it and so when you're holding a log and it weighs five pounds one pound of that is water yeah you know and that water has to be a certain hot and it has to move a certain speed to be able to go out and if if it condenses back into from vapor into little droplets before it gets out the chimney it condenses on the side of the chimney and will run back down okay that's why i use sand you can see exactly where it was sitting and you can get it centered perfect and it creates a nice little seal Yeah, it's a lot, it doesn't stick out as far. Uh -uh. And it's not just as massive. And 
that'll be that. And you guys can see how easy this is to clean out. If you get ash in there, is you just let it cool down and stick a stick a vacuum in there and make sure it's not hot still, but you just stick a little vacuum in there and vacuum it up. We have yet to have anything in here that needs to be vacuumed up. I, I've never, and I did take it apart last time, but there was nothing. There was nothing in the bench end of it. The only place things seem to collect is in here because they got sucked up the chimney because they are super light. And it, and it didn't extend all the way up the chimney. It was just right here. Valve. That's open going that way and it closes it that way and just the opposite. Just all out of sheet metal. So it's all hooked up with the valve. And we're ready uh, to go. Into the bench. And Julie's got her big, long, nice eight foot long bench here. So Filled exciting. With, so. Filled with fire bricks and pebbles. So we're going to go ahead and start this. And um, I've already got lots of wood out here. I just There's need wood to, out here? There is in the blue tub. But I, I needed to find some matches and some fabric because it starts better with that. So we'll take a video of the first light of it being out here. And then we're going to put the pebble shroud around it too. So we'll see how long it takes for the little stove to get the cabin I warm. should have put a little bit of wax outside the cloth. Pretty as can be. Did it fit right over? Yep. I think it gives us a little bit more clearance in the house too. It does because the, the other stove stuck out to here. Yeah. A little on that side. You see the Ooh, heat all the, up? Yeah. Oh, I didn't shut the, shut the um, things. The rocks are going to come. Go ahead. Oh, Give her a tap. Are. Because we haven't tried it yet, have we? Oh no. Uh -uh. I don't think we have. So. Okay, light. Okay. Isn't that thing cool? I wonder how it would slow it down if we put it through the bench now. Well, as long as we have coals, I've never had a problem with it switching before. You can always hear it. Oh, though. you can hear the slowdown. The way that I can always tell is to, to touch the chimneys because you when you switch the um, yeah, from one to another, it, they switch and one becomes cold and one becomes hot. Oh, wow. It wasn't. It's not, not hot a, at all. It's hardly. It's it's not hot enough. It's um, it's still absorbing all the heat energy and yep. radiating out before it even gets out. I, I should, with my good. bare hand to be able to touch like that, I mean. It's not ready yet. It's not ready yet. But that's what's kind of cool is this shell, see, this is still cold. I mean, super cold. Right. Like, like refrigerator cold, cold. Yeah. It's still absorbing energy from the fire. Once this gets super warm, especially in this cabin, it's perfect. It stays hot all night. Yeah. You know? And when you have the bench, oh, forget about it. But the thing about it is, is it was below zero last night. Those rocks in that bench right now, cold. super cold. Bench up. But once it's warmed up, all you have to do is every 18, 12, 18 hours is run it for a couple hours and, and, it, and it heats it right back up to temperature. So, go check out Darwin's channel. It's the Honeydew Carpenter. Check out his store, the Honeydew Carpenter on Etsy. And uh, the way that he built the stove, he's creating a PDF with those plans. But you also need a Fomate, which is his air, uh, concrete aeration tool. Um, what else do you have going on? Is that it? That's all, it all for right now. Yeah. <laughs> There's too many things going on right now to keep up with. So it's been two hours since I left the cabin with Darwin. 
the cabin is now very nice and warm. It's it's borderline almost too warm now, so all of the heat is directed into the bench. What I'm going to do right now is just tidy things up. Uh, we have the the old rocket stove that needs to be taken out because we're not going to be using it until um, until it's fixed. So I need to take all the parts for that out. I need to get all the pebbles off the floor that came out of that shroud. Um, I need to sweep the dirt up. I need to sweep up everything that came out of the chimney. I need to fold blankets. It doesn't take very long to clean up a tiny house, but it still needs to be cleaned. Um, mostly we've just got too many things in here and that, that chirping sound, that is my carbon monoxide slash smoke detector. It's not chirping because it has smoke, it's chirping because it's need, it needs its batteries changed. I like to save feed sacks because they make really great all-purpose garbage sacks. And so I have a couple of these out here that I'm just kind of filling as I go. And uh, it, there is something to, be, something to be said for tiny houses because everything is finished quickly. Nothing really draws, draws out very long. And I apologize for the chirping of the smoke detector. Alright, so I have burned two small quarters in the hours since, uh, not John, since Darwin left. You can still see this, the fan is still going. I wanted to show you the inside of the stove and what it looks like burning. So I'm going to put my valve down and it's going to start to roar really big now. But I just wanted to show you what it looks like. And you can see that it's not really burning it so much as it's gasifying it. All you really see is what's burning is those gases coming off. That. When it's that efficient, when it has that many coals, all it's burning is the gases. It's not burning the wood. It's, it's gasifying it. Complete burn. And so I like to put it through the bench because then it's just burning too hot to do any good otherwise. See, at night, I always have the fire dead before I go to bed because I, I like to be able to babysit my fire. If I have a fire going, I want to be alert enough that if there is a spark that goes somewhere, we're safe. That's one of the things I love about the rocket stove is you can heat your cabin up and have it warm without having the fire going at night. So. so that's it. It is a beautiful night. Really pretty sunset. Hopefully the girls have their chores done. And I'm gonna go in. And hopefully they still have the fire in the house going. Winter, winter wonderland. The goats need taken care of this morning. But it is 7.30 a.m. And I need to come check and see what the temperature in the cabin is. This is all stuff from the last winter. And it is still warm. It's as warm in here as my house, actually. I propped up the bench last night so that the pebbles could um, warm the cabin. The blankets are warm. And the pebbles are warm. So that's good. And the stove did all that on three quarters. So not even, 
not even a whole log, three quarters of a log. So, let's open this up. And the stove itself is still warm. Now I use old cotton shirts, I use uh, chopsticks, I use old jeans, I use worn out towels and I just cut them up and use them as my kindling. This, I don't know if you can see that, those two bowls are full of liquid. And this is a, something that happens when we divert the heat from the stove into the bench. My thoughts on that, again, because I haven't heard of this being a problem with um, a conventional rocket mass heater that uses cob, my thoughts on that are that the reason for that is that our chimney is too long. I think that if we had a really short chimney like the other ones that I've seen. I've never seen one that was like three feet long. I've only ever seen one that was like just barely popped out of the cabin. So I wonder if we popped most of our chimney off, if most of our chimney was taken out instead of rising up like a conventional one, if we just took it out and just had it capped right there outside the window, I wonder what would happen. Um, we don't have a problem with the inside of the chimney getting dirty, but we, what we do have is we have this water. So there's my stove, the new one, and uh, it kept everything warm for 13 hours. I believe we were in single digits last night. I know we were in single digits last night, I just don't know how single digits. Um, that popping means it's a good time to close my door. <laughs> and I'll make sure and latch it before I go out. Very confident in the girls being able to come out and put more wood into it if they want to come out here and spend time. But it is sure a pretty little stove. And I do miss sleeping out here when the stove is out here because it's just so comfy. The thing when I was working a job. <laughs> and I had my job that I hated and I'd have to go work at it for 10 hours I would come home and do projects and that was my re rest and relaxation 